Hello and welcome to another episode of Beyond Loss, Loving Life with Karen Chaston. I'm Karen Chaston and it's so glad to have you here in the loft with me, in the Beyond Loss, Loving Life loft. Well, actually, it's the, the Chaston Centre loft, but we today we are going to talk about how to move beyond loss. And today there is no guest, there's just me. So welcome everybody and I look forward to us having a conversation today because today, so please put in the comments where you're from, what's happening and feel free to ask me any questions as we go through because the topic that I'm going to talk about today is something that's really near and dear to my heart and something that I just absolutely love talking about so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up my little yeah there we are and we're going to talk about the people and profits connection actually I'm going to go like this and we'll just talk about it so the people and profits connection is something that most of you are probably aware hi uh, mama G nice to see you here Kiora Aura okay is that where you're from nice to where is that I've never heard of that place so exciting I assume it's probably in New Zealand but I could be wrong anyway let me know so the people and profits connection is as a former CFO of a publicly listed company I understand how a company can make profits obviously I wouldn't have been a CFO if I didn't understand that but now as a beyond loss mentor I understand people and what I've found is that I wish I had this understanding when I used to be a CFO because most companies, the majority of companies in my experience, and I'd love to know what you think, really do not understand or value their employees as their greatest asset. And that's what I want to talk about today is not only how people and leaders and companies can value all of their employees as their greatest asset, it's also about you whether you're a leader or an employee in how you can start to value you as your greatest asset because what I've found is a lot of the times when we are building our career and our professional life sometimes we forget about ourselves and it's in the forgetting about ourselves that we don't live and love our best life. So that's what I'm going to talk about today because um, it's, you know, as, as, as you can see, the show is beyond loss, loving life. And I feel that most companies are not really achieving their greatest profits and their greatest, they're not becoming the greatest company that they can become because of this one little loss, this one little thing that they've lost in their translation is the fact that they're not really looking after and valuing their people. So how does that sound? I know it's a different topic to be on this, um, on these website pages, but guess what, on these Facebook pages, but it's something that I feel that we all need to discuss. And it's about us figuring out how we can do it. Okay, so let me share my screen for a little while. And as I said, it's about the people and profits connection. So I want to ask you um, a question if I get my everything working rightly. So I'm going to ask you a question. Are you displaying traits, either you as an employee or a leader, are you displaying them or do you have people around you who are displaying these traits? Things like always complaining procrastinating, coming up with excuses, perfectionism, you know, passing the buck or being unmotivated. So let's deep dive into each of those on an individual level. Okay, so we'll come back to me. I just wanted to show you that. Okay, so let's look at complaining. Are you complaining all the time? And if you are, have you done a deep dive into yourself to actually figure out what that's about? 
you know if you finding fault in every single thing that you're doing are you doing the right things like are you in the right environment is there something inside of you or is there something that you're missing that's unfulfilled that's making you complain about everything else like are you nitpicking that's a really good question for you to sort of deep dive into and for you to figure out because it's a symptom it's not the cause actually all of these are symptoms they're they're not the cause of what's truly at the heart at the, the reason why we are displaying these traits or why our employees are displaying these traits. And a lot of the times, um, oh, wow, Mama G, interesting. So it's about you actually saying to yourself or saying to your employees, what is it that you're complaining about? You know, what is the reason is it? Is it really about this issue or is it about something else in your life that you are finding unfulfillment about? You know, like when we're young, let's think about it, we sort of look to our future and we go, this is who I'm going to be and these are the things that I'm going to do and I'm going to have this amazing life. You know, no one designs or, you know, consciously wants a life where we have a lot of things being thrown at us and, and sort of stopping us in our track. But what I've found in not only in my own life but in every other person's life who I assist to move beyond loss is what I've found is there's amazing gifts and lessons in all of the tragedies and all of the things that didn't work out the way that we thought they were going to work out. There really is a gift when we deep dive into it. And the deep dive is always into yourself and it's not easy. I'm telling you now, it's so not easy. And it reminds me of, you know, Rumi actually would tell us that when earth was being created and i don't care what you call the creator let's call it the creator because that sort of just trans you know works past any religious beliefs or anything like that so when the creator was creating the earth they decided that they wanted to put all of the treasures somewhere on earth and they wanted us all to find them because they knew that when we found the treasures, we would enhance our lives, we'd be happier, we'd be more joyous, we'd be more successful, we would be more harmonious. And what happened was they said there was a big debate about where we're we going to put these treasures. So they decided that originally they said let's put them in the mountains it'll take them a long time to climb those mountains or to you know drill through them and do all those sort of things they said no we're giving them intelligence they'll very quickly do all of that and then someone said i know i know let's put them at the bottom of the ocean because that's really really far down and they can't get there they can't breathe that far down so they won't be able to get there easily and they said no no they'll get there quite easily and then the creator said i know i've got it and they said where and he said i'll put them all inside of everybody because not many people will venture there. So let's think about that for a moment. Not many people will venture inside of themselves. And to be quite honest, it's not an easy thing to do because sometimes we're a little bit scared to deep dive into ourselves. What if we find that we don't like that person? What if we find that there's a whole lot of things that we've been covering up and we don't really want to release them because they cause us a lot of pain, right? And it sort of makes sense that 
When you're doing any of these things, which were complaining, procrastinating, coming up with excuses, even perfectionism, passing the bark or being unmotivated, it all comes back to you. Now, sure, it may be the company and it may be the way that they do things that have actually been what got you to there, but that's a symptom. Because if you actually wake up every day and jump out of bed all excited and thrilled to be where you are, nothing is going to make you display those traits because you know that you are on a pathway going to where you have set your goals and you're heading very quickly towards them and not just goals in your professional life but in every single area of your life and that's where it's really interesting that it's that we ask ourselves when we are displaying any negative trait why are we doing this what's this really about you know why why do i feel this way and how can i heal it because when we ask ourselves those questions we come to a place of not only finding the answers, but also designing a way that we can go from where we are now to where we want to be. And that's what life's about. It's about us, the destin. It's not about the destination. It's about every step that we take to get there. And let's face it, our life is a journey of us taking a step, heading towards where we want to be. And even when we get there, we want to be somewhere else because we're continually up-leveling ourselves. And this is whether it's really important, right, because today's theme is called the People and Profits Connection. And it's really important for us to all understand that we have all of these individuals in our company who are all on a similar journey of wanting to be joyous and happy and to provide for their family and to be healthy and, you know, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, physically. Yet we get stuck. We get stuck in that pursuit. You know, we might have a door close that we thought was going to be continually open to us or Someone may say something or do something that wasn't ideal and it takes us a while to get over it. Someone may pass. Hi, Glennis. Nice to see you here. Today we're talking about the people and profits connection so that we can understand that when we understand that in a company we have all these people on a similar journey, and I say similar because it's not the same, because we all have different goals. We all have different things that we really are passionate about. And all our purposes are different. And our purposes change throughout our life. It's not as though we, you know, as soon as we're born, it's our purpose is we're going to do this and that's where we're going to be. No. Different phases in our life create a different purpose. You know, for example, when you are a, have young children, your purpose is to help those children to grow and to be able to become responsible um, and adults who can contribute to society. So that will be a different purpose that you have in those years than, say, when you are older and your children are adults. Sure, they may have children as well and your grandchildren, but it's a completely different purpose that you will have. But we're all here to succeed and to fulfil whatever purpose we have chosen for this lifetime. So when we're in a, a situation where we are, as I said, complaining or procrastinating or finding excuses or we are, you know, so into perfectionism that it actually stalls us from going ahead and doing things. 
and then to pass the bark or to be unmotivated. Hi, Glennis. I'm 54, still don't know my purpose. I just know hard heartache that life has brought me. What I've found, Glennis, and I'm not about to tell you what your purpose is, if you deep dive into you, as I said earlier, um, you will actually find what your purpose is. But what I've found is your purpose, like your overall purpose, may come from the heartache that has happened in your life. Like I, I know for me that's exactly what's happened. You know, before my son passed away and before I chose redundancy, um, you know, nearly 10 years ago now, uh, well, nine and 10 years ago, well, eight and nine years ago, I I was a CFO of a public release company. There is no way I would ever have been doing anything like this. There is no way that I would have been the one helping people how to move beyond any kind of loss. I didn't understand it. I hadn't deep dived into it. But through my life experiences and the pathways that I chose to take after Dan passed away in 2011 and then I chose redundancy in 2012, that I found that there must have been an easier way. I, I kept saying to myself, surely there must be an easier way to move beyond loss. Now, as a CFO, every day I would say something similar. Surely there must be an easier way to do this. Surely there must be an easier way to do that. So I've always had this inquiry in mind as in surely there must be an easier way for whatever it was that I was talking about. And, you know, relationships are not easy. There's so much things in our life that are not easy. So when we're always asking ourselves, surely there must be an easier way, you then sort of start to receive the answers to the questions that you keep asking yourself because let's face it for every question we ask there is an answer waiting to be revealed and for every answer that is revealed there's an, then an action step for us to take and as we keep taking those action steps we get closer and closer and closer and closer to finding that better way and that's what I did because I didn't like the way that I did loss and I didn't want anyone else to have to experience that heartache. So I went looking for an easier way, which is what all my programs are all about because I help people to move beyond any kind of loss and to create their better everyday life. It's that simple. And that's why I love talking about the people and profits connection because most people in a workplace do not understand that every single person that comes up or rocks up to work every single day have their own little issues going on in their life outside of the walls of this company. Yet we, so often the leaders and the managers want you to be one-dimensional, just to rock up today and just do your work and then go home. But when you've got so many things going on in your life that are not ideal, how can you do that? And that's what I love to do is I love to show companies how they can get their employees motivated, how they can assist every single one of them to be able to feel um, motivated to collaborate, you know, to learn more, to actually want to learn more and to value the feedback that they are giving. Because, you know, one thing I've learned in my journey since leaving my corporate life is feedback is the best friend that you can ever get. Do you have to take it always on board? No, maybe not. But it's through you actually receiving feedback that you can then say, is this right? How can I grow from this? How can I learn from this? What is this actually about? Is it about me or is it about them? And then you can actually just go find from them. And let's face it, 
We can always give better customer service no matter who we are in any company. And the more that we grow the company through return on the investment, the more that we can actually, you know, love going to work every day because if the company's not stressed, then you won't be stressed. It's that simple. So let's have a look what Glennis has to say. I don't know if that answered your question in, in assisting you on how to figure out what your purpose is. Um, is that the right approach, Glennis? Um, locking yourself away. Because what I have found is certainly lock yourself away to find your answers. But if there's just you and your husband and, and no one else around, are you living and loving your life? And I don't know because I, I've, obviously I'm just reading what you've written here and that's my question. Um, is there an, a better way for you to, to figure out what your life is all about and where you're going? You know, in, the, in my journey after I left my corporate life, you know, to become um, a beyond loss expert. And let's face it, I, I took a couple of different rows before, but, you know, and I, and I used to think that maybe I took the wrong roads, but I'm, there's never, ever a wrong road because they're all learning roads. And, you know, they all lead to where you're meant to be, even though you may take a longer time to get there, but it, the, you will learn and grow so much more on that road. So what I found was that you were the only person that you were going to spend your entire life with. Now, when you think about that, it's really huge, isn't it, that you were the only person you were going to spend your entire life with. So, Sure, we have our family and our friends and our work colleagues all around us. But when you think about it, you're the only one that you're with 24-7. And you're the only one that, you know, will be your entire life with. So when you think about that, it gives you a better perspective on why am I here? What am I doing here? How can I learn and grow? And what is the purpose of me being here? No one can ever tell you what your purpose is. It's all about you figuring it out. And maybe that is the purpose of our life, is to spend our life figuring out who am I, why am I here, and how can I leave this place better than how I found it? And when you answer the third one, I think the third one is what it's all about. How can I assist other people? How can I leave it better than I found it? And, you know, like if you look at this year, it's completely different to what any any of us have ever experienced or any of us would have ever thought we would experience. You know, it's you go back centuries and centuries and centuries and sure, some of them had some really hard and dark times to live in, but no one ever expected the whole world to be in exactly the same situation. It's really... You know, there would be certain countries going through something or certain areas of a country going through something, but never has the whole world been affected by exactly the same thing. And from my perspective, it's like it was time for us to stop. We were all so busy accumulating and being busy you know, one of my th things when people would, I'd ask them, how are they? And they'd go busy. And I'd say, busy doing what? And they go, you know, just being busy. And I'm going, no, seriously, what are you busy doing? And they would come back with, you know, all these answers. Well, you know, I'm just being busy. 
And it's when you start to say, well, why are you busy? And is there a better way? Is there an easier way? It also reminds me, I was speaking to a lady, a, a leader in a company, and she said to me, I asked one of my employees how they were, and then for the next half hour they told me, what am I meant to do with that? That's, that's not what I expected. I expected her to say fine and move on. We've created a world where we we're very superficial at times. You know, if you ask someone how they are and then they tell you and you're upset that they told you, it's a bit of a catch-22, like why did you ask in the first place if you really didn't know, want to know? And that's what the People and Profits is all about. It's providing skills for every single person in the workplace to be able to know what to do when someone actually tells you what to do or how they are, isn't it? Because when we see our employees as our most valuable asset, we will then look after them. We will then assist them in all of their trials and all of their things that they're going through will notice straight away when they're not performing as well as they did yesterday. Okay, we will ask those questions. What's going on? How can I assist you? Because at the moment, we don't really notice when people aren't performing the same way they did yesterday. And then all of a sudden, six months later goes past and we realise, what's going on? Like they used to be this star employee. Why have they gone down to being our, you know, our least valuable? If we'd caught it really early on, we could have assisted them so we wouldn't have had that downward spiral from them personally, emotionally, physically, mentally, and even spiritually. But more importantly, our company wouldn't have suffered as well. Because when one poor employee goes down, all of the others seem to lower their standard. Before we know it, we're not providing the service that we would like to. So we're all connected. Even though we may look completely different, act completely different, have completely different roles, we're all connected. And it is about us all helping and looking at our colleagues and saying, how can I help you? How are you? And then listening to the answer. And then asking, would you really like my assistance? And then figuring out how you can assist them. Okay, Glennis, thank you. I just can't anymore as my heart has been broken, stepped on and thrown out to the trash. Glennis, I totally understand. But if you would like to be able to move beyond loss, may I suggest, and I'll just put up my banner, May I suggest that you start by downloading my book, Life After Loss, because things come into our life to assist us to learn and to grow and to become the person that we're meant to be. So I would really love for you to read the book and then reach out. Um, you'll see as you go through the book that there is a, um, you'll see as you go through the book that there is actually a, a way that you can book in and have a 30-minute session with me for free, complimentary, um, and we can talk about it because the last thing I um, want is for people to be suffering. There's no need for us to grieve and suffer. There is no need um for us to take so long to do that deep dive into ourselves. And, and that's what it's all about. Um, thanks, Glennis. And I really do hope that you um, download it. What I might do is because you can't see it, and I don't, 
I have a copy. Normally I have a copy. Uh, what I'll do is I'll type it in here as well so that you can um, so that you can actually figure out how to move beyond all that has happened in our life. And I totally understand, you know, as you said, if it's happened from the womb forward, there's a, there's a lot to heal. Um, you know, you've got over 50 years, I think you said you were, didn't you? Yeah, 54. So you've got like 55 years of healing um, to be able to come to the place where you can live and love your life. And that's what I, you know, just love. Let me make sure I've just typed this right. Life after loss. There you are. So if you click on that link that I've just typed in, you'll be able to very easily download the book and um, have a read of it and then reach out because... Oh, it didn't go in. Why didn't it go in? Karen Chase will come life after loss. Um, I don't know why. Let me type it again and see if it works. This is so much fun doing things live, isn't it? So that we can. So does anyone have any questions why I am typing this um, in regards to anything? Yes, it's in. Oh, okay, cool. It just took its time. Okay, I don't need to retype it again. Okay, thank you. Hope that uh, works. Okay, is there any other questions from anyone? Because today is all about you figuring out how you can like live and love your life. And, and of course, how we can create a work environment where every single employee lives and loves their life. Now, let's just think about that for a moment. Just imagine, say you have 50 employees, every single one of them rocks up each day, healthy, energised, ready to do a full day's work. And when I say a full day's work, it's not 10, 12 hours, it's seven. I can't going to say seven. Seven's a really good number because what they produce in those seven hours they get to go home early because they, they know that they have looked after themselves when they have gone home early. That hour early, just imagine, right? Everyone got out after working seven hours instead of eight. You still get paid for eight, so don't get worried. You still get paid for eight, but you're only going to work seven hours. No more 10 hours, no more 12 hours. We're working seven hours a day. And the reason we're working seven hours a day is because we would like you to do something for you in that hour, that extra hour that we have given to you. Now, it could be that you choose to go to the gym or it could be that you choose to go out into nature, to meditate, to do something just for you. It could be that you choose to catch up with a friend. Hi, Kerry, nice to see you here again. It could be that you choose to catch up with a friend for that hour, it's a different friend every day, okay? Now, you're still being paid for eight hours a day. You're only working physically seven, but that other hour is the time, your time. I'm going to call it me time because it's such a beautiful concept. Can you imagine every day, five days a week, we all have an hour eat me time? It's five hours, right? That's actually being paid for by our employer. Therefore, when we go home to our family, we are relaxed. We're not stressed because we've had that hour to do whatever we wanted to do for ourselves. So therefore, when we walk through the door, right, we are ready to be there for our partner, our family, anyone who, our animals, okay? And because we've had that hour me time each day, therefore we will have better conversations. We won't just slump onto the couch. Sure, we might watch TV later, but we won't be spending the whole time we're home doing it. It does sound good, doesn't it, Kerry? But it can be quite easy to happen. So then we can go to bed and then, of course, the next day we wake up early and we choose to do whatever we want to and then we rock up to work ready to work because we know 
that we only will be doing seven hours, but we will really get in and make sure that it will happen. And then we have our hour me time and then we continue on. So every day flows on like that. Now let's think about it. From an employer's perspective, they may be thinking, I'm paying them for eight hours, but they're only working seven. But do you know what? They are more productive when I paid them for eight and they stayed 10, 12 hours. I am actually receiving more from them because they are having that hour me time every day. So they're not fulfilled. They're not having their whole body scream out, what about me? How come I'm giving, 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 giving and receiving nothing for me? But they're also having time with their family and their friends and they're looking after themselves mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually. They're looking after all of their relationships. So just imagine this company, how it is going to thrive, not only from an employee's perspective, but also from a customer perspective. Because let's face it, when we rock up to work energised, happy, joyous, knowing that we will be there for that set amount of time, knowing that the more that we do, the more that we process in that time, the more that our employer will continue to give us that hour me time every day. Is the company going to thrive or is it going to dive? It's pretty easy to know the answer to that, isn't it? The company is going to thrive because their employees have really got everyone's back. They know that the more that we do, the more we collaborate together, the more we work together, the more we look after and value everything that we do, we no longer will be sitting around procrastinating, um, being competitive with each other, being unmotivated. We understand that there's no such thing as perfectionism, but we know that there is still a standard that we can easily come to without perfectionism. And that's what I wanted to talk to you today about because there's a huge loss in most companies in the fact and they don't even realise it's a loss in the fact that they're not valuing and treating their employees as their most valuable asset. It's a really easy focus shift that they can do. And that's the biggest problem with employees being classed in the profit and loss because it's seen as an expense. It's not seen as an investment. Therefore, they don't maintain their employees. They don't invest in them. They don't provide training and upskilling and ensuring that they are healthy mentally, emotionally, physically, and spiritually. So that's what I wanted to talk to you about today because I know that when employees and leaders are treated that way, the company will thrive and when the company thrives, our communities thrive and when our communities thrive, our state thrives and when our states thrive, our country thrives and then it flows out into all of the world because the best practices will be seen as this is the way we ensure that our people and profits are thriving. It's really simple. We've all made it so hard. We've gone into this world of competition, of things are never meant to be easy. But do you know what? They can be easy. So that's all I'm going to share with you today, how every single company can embrace the people and profits connection. Because it does sound ideal. Kerry, and it's really easy for all of us to actually maintain. There are even some companies already doing that. There's one company in the States that works a five-hour day 
every day. Sure, every now and then when they've got something that really requires, you know, a deadline to be met, they may work a little bit longer. But every day the norm is they work five hours a day and they all get paid for eight because they've utilised all of the different ways to ensure that they can still be very productive and there for those hours. And then they have all those other hours to look after themselves to ensure that when they do rock up, they are present and they are there for that time and nothing else. So that's my show for today, how you can move beyond loss and love life to live and love your life that's what it's all about so if you don't have any more questions i'm going to leave you all today and i'd like to thank you all for being here glennis i hope that you have downloaded my book life after loss um and anyone else of course so thank you all for being here i don't think there's anything else so bye for now and just think about it have you created your me time every day 20 minutes an hour that's all that it requires and let's think about 20 minutes did you realize there's actually 72 20 minutes in every day don't tell me you can't find 20 minutes to find your me time bye for now i'll leave you on that thanks carrie